Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. And this is Shonen Archive, a series in which me and Zen watch all of Shonen Jump anime through time and space that is available in English <laughs> and also in mass form in some way. Uh, I mentioned that one just because uh, I'll, it's, it bears mentioning. Please, Lost Media people, find the JoJo movie. <laughs> we need it. Oh, oh, God. Yeah, we need it so we bad. We need it so badly. And we plan to do this until either the universe implodes on itself or me and Zen get taken out by some unknown person. Well, for Zen, it won't be unknown. He'll get taken down like the grassy knoll by a, by a My Hero fan. After he's just, <laughs> for one joke too many. And I will be taken down by the ultimate, uh, I actually don't know what will take me down. Feel free to leave in the comments down below what will take me down. <laughs> what will be my eventual device? But for now, we're here to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, episode 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. And yes, that's it. And it's been a while. There was a break. We've explained this in the Gintama one, and now I'm here to explain it. We took a break uh, because Zen was on vacation. There we go. I was going to yep. do a, so a solo uh, Shonen Archive for Arc 5 or Arc V, but the final season of Arc V made me not want to talk about Arc V until we have to talk about <laughs> it for Shonen Archive. <laughs> I still am a big fan of uh, uh, Yuya and uh, Gong Strong and all those others, but let me tell you. <laughs> Yeah, a good way to write a bad season finale. <laughs> you can watch Arc V and take notes there. It, it's really bad. Ouch. Yeah. Not even Yuga's coward father could save the day. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that. His but we'll get there. His cowardly father. Exactly. His terribly cowardly father, which someone says to Yuya after he says, My dad was a hero. He says, No, your father was a coward. <laughs> <laughs> why is everyone like i get i understand hating on the father if he's really such a horrible coward uh why are they bullying his son so bad <laughs> because yuya just loves his dad so much and he's always like he's okay you know what he doesn't do any favors to himself his father is obviously known for running away so what the second he hears that his father is in some kind of vicinity, he goes, Oh yeah, my dad, he's still alive and he's around. I knew he wasn't a coward. Just for someone from that dimension to like fucking quote tweet him and go, Actually, your father was a fucking coward and he left us. <laughs> he left us in the fusion dimension. How do you like that? And he's like, he did it. Oh yeah, were you there? Just like your father wasn't there for you. <laughs> It's really, yeah. Poor it's child. Really, it's poor child. Love him, though. You love Yuya, and I love his coward dad as well <laughs> when he does show up, because he shows up and he got fucked up by dueling. We'll get to that when we get to that, <laughs> and now we'll talk about the... <laughs> right now, we're going to talk about episode 36 of yu gi -Oh! GX, which is called, in English, Dual Distractions Part 1, but in Japan, it's known as Masawachi versus the Amazonist Mary Off Duel. Yes. Uh, oh God, this is. Uh, <laughs> mm hmm. So uh, they defeated Camula thanks to Jaden and Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wingman. Um, and so they are now. They, they come upon the next um, of the seven stars, which is this Amazonian woman who is eventually revealed to, in fact, be a tiger. Um, but for right yeah. now, she's a woman. She's a big um, old buff woman Amazon big, built like a lady. Um, they, um, Misawa is up and he's like, ah, oh, the Shadow Riders are not doing stuff these days. The Seven Stars, sorry, I keep forgetting the, I switched the Japanese and the English names around too much with these no, guys. It's all right. Um, and, uh, he reveals he has a crush on white magician Pikaru, which is weird. Super think, weird. He finds it in his deck, and he's kind of, like, embarrassed that he keeps it in his deck. And then when people... I think Chumley and um, uh, Cyrus start talking about, like, oh, yeah, you're, you're... Like, a specific card that you... A card crush that you keep... Idol card that you keep in your deck just because... 
it's a pretty girl to look at. And I think um, Sho says his is Thunder Nian Nian. And then that's when uh, he drops the Dian Keto, the Cure Master for Chumley. Yes, when Chumley reveals that it's Dian Keto, the Cure Master. Yeah, big, into big women, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Much respect for Chumley. But it is an odd choice, because it's also yes. much older than him. Yes, yes. Anyway. <laughs> Continue on. Bastion is uh, too cool for love. He's got time for that shit. He's got card games to play. Exactly. Um, and then their opponent ends up being a um, pretty lady who wants to marry uh, a duelist. And so she challenges them to determine if any of them are worthy to marry her. Um, and all of the dudes are like, we'll do it. Um, and it ends up being Misawa who does it, uh, with another hilarious reveal of the, uh, suicide bomb deck vest. (laughs) Yep. Which he, which he chooses to, uh, his, what deck he wants to use. Um, she ends, he ends up choosing his earth cards. Uh, and then she's like, pick my deck, the knowledge deck or the, the bravery deck. And he's like, I want the the knowledge deck. And so they start their uh, their duel. And as you can imagine, uh, in a season one GX duel that does not have Jaden in it, it doesn't go great. <laughs> nope. It goes actively bad for him. Um, he ends up losing. But then by the end of it, he's kind of take. He's like he starts to be like, you know what? Maybe it's all right to love a giant buff woman. <laughs> Maybe it's all right yes, to love. Yes, he uh, he slowly comes around on giant buff ladies. To the shocker of everyone, <laughs> suddenly yes. the sigma male fell to, <laughs> yes. to love. He could not handle it, and he ends up losing. Um... Yeah, and that's how the episode ends. The Sigma mindset loses. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's some stuff here that I like from this. As always, the return of the bomber jacket is always good when it's related to Misawa. It might be the best thing about Misawa. It is uh, easily the funniest thing about Misawa. Like, yes. By, by far. To show how badly he, the, the waiting for the, uh, the seven stars has affected his mind... He goes to the Slifer Red Dorm and he fucking plays Barrel Dragon and uses Barrel Dragon to wake them up. <laughs> and then he wakes them up to have draw practice, which is maybe the most weird thing to ever say. Not yeah, to well, fr- it's a it's a weird thing in GX where they're like, drawing is a, a talent that you hone. Oh, yeah, that's true. Tarzan did teach us that drawing is actually a skill. <laughs> if you draw bad, it's on you. I completely forgot about that. Um, I really do like Misawa is just the, the, I guess they start in the beginning of this episode of him being like, I don't need women. I don't need, you know, I'm a very serious man who has no time for anything of that nature. So then when he fights against the shadow rider, who's like, oh, no, I only care about that. I think she even, I forget how she gets all the men in dual Academy to build this uh, Coliseum for her. I think she just takes them right. And then holds them hostage with a, um, tiger. And that's Uh when they also get, um, Crowler is there and he's just like I think she thinks all of them but Crowler specifically is like you don't get anything <laughs> leave my presence yeah cause he's not uh, like manly enough no there's also a really good bit when she says he who considers himself a true man step forward and Manjo, Mei, Musawa, Judai all step forward and then their teacher turns his back the other one yeah who holds him. yeah the slifer red guy the teacher from slifer red yeah. turns away he turns away and i think this is another one where um uh asuka is like when she hears like when she hears the, sh- the shadow rider only wants to fight men she's like you gotta be shitting me yeah she has not gotten a chance to duel anyone yet <laughs> and absolutely she no is one. rejected by this shadow rider <laughs> and she's just like come on this is such unfair bullshit uh, there's also a really good bit. This is the only good bit that show has had so far in the 36 episodes we've had. Actually, this episode, he was pretty good just because it focused on his greatest character trait, which is that he really loves women. Mm-hmm. Um, when she's saying the specifics of the duel, which is if I win, I'm taking you back to my village to be my husband. 
show in a very serious face says, I'm a little bit jealous of this duel. <laughs> yeah, and he has, like, the um, the really serious, like, anime face. He like, does. Yeah. He's like, ah, it's not. Damn. It's played like he's found some devastating information out. Yes, which I thought was very good. So that that's the one <laughs> I will give due to show when it is due. Uh, it's his best character trait is that he absolutely loves women in a, in a way that's really funny to me. Uh, the other great thing is the first card that uh, Masawa plays when fighting an Amazonius woman is the Magnet Warrior Sigma. Which yes. Is why we've, which is why we've been making Sigma jokes. Also, he says, your woman rays have zero. I'm unaffected by your carnal rays. <laughs> And then he talks about, like, he starts having a midday breakdown over the power of women. He has, like, a th- images of Picaro, Dianketo, and Thunder Nian as he says, no, it's different, it's totally different. And then Masawapu is going through some rough times as they see him. So this is really the... <laughs> and when he loses, this is really just the complete destruction of this character. <laughs> this character cannot continue. <laughs> There's no yes. coming back from this, especially after how the next one goes. I would say maybe there's a chance of redemption here, because obviously Monjomi had one. But after the next episode and we go over the specifics of what happens to him there, there's no returning for this man. <laughs> His character is dead. <laughs> this character mm-hmm. has been shot. This he, he's are got answer. nothing left. Yep. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But I really ended up uh, enjoying it. A lot of it has to do with the fact that I actually did like the Amazon Zonus cards in Yu-Gi-Oh!, I think they're always a cool archetype that is always like off unless you play Duel Links. Apparently they were really good in Duel Links for the beginning because of Amazon Swordswoman is fucking crazy when you only have Yeah, four there was lands. a there was a deck in the very beginning of Duel Links that basically just like um used that ability that doubles the attack of the opponent's monster, but then it stops them from being able to attack directly. Yeah, massive more, uh, I think is a yeah. good. And so you would just use that over and over again. And they, all of their monsters can't attack you directly, so you wouldn't play any monsters other than Amazon as Swordswoman. And you would just play her once you finally drew her and attack into them and one-shot them with her effect. Yep. Really good. So, yes. I a really good cheese thing from back in the day, at least. So I like the Amazonas cards, and I ended up liking her. Um, which is 100% predicated on the fact that she's a giant buff Amazonas woman that likes to duel. Which is like basically the ticking, tick, checking the chick bark of every single thing that I could have asked for in anything in a character. I'd be like, oh yeah, this is pretty fucking sweet. <laughs> pretty good. So yeah, I ended up liking this episode. I think it's a very solid one. Obviously nothing compared to the bigger ones. <laughs> she might actually be the weakest Shadow Rider in terms of good episodes, but I still enjoyed it. even though. Yeah, she's was- played a lot more like a gag than the last two were. Yeah. Um, but it's a good gag because it it destroys an already mediocre character. <laughs> <laughs> a character who was on the like the lowdown. Now that Minjomi is back is better. There's really no reason for Masawa to be on the second pedestal. <laughs> Someone yeah. had to take him down. <laughs> Someone had to dispose of uh, Misawa. Exactly. So let's go on to the next episode, which is episode 37. In English, called Dual Distraction Part 2, but called in Japanese, Human Bullet Duel, Amazonist Death Ring. <laughs> Which is a yes. much better name. Um, so Misawa continued to duel the Amazonist with all of his various decks, and he lost every single time. Um, he ended up proving himself incapable of being the Amazonist's husband because he was just sucked too bad. So he got booted out. Uh, he's very sad about it. Um... Judai eventually goes in and decides he's going to duel her because they've got to get her out of the way because she's one of the Shadow Riders. Um, Judai and her duel one another. She also has one of the greatest lines here because, again, she's not really interested in the keys. She's only really interested in the men for their bodies. So she says, Judai, your looks are quite fine, though you're a bit on the stupid side. Yes, which is true. (laughs) He is Uh, true. (laughs) Which is accurate. Very um, They start dueling, and this time Judai picks the opposite deck that Bastion picks. He picks the, the Bravery deck. Um, they duel, and of course Judai wins, and it's revealed that uh, the Amazonist was actually a white tiger the whole time. Yeah. Uh, 
when Judai wins, she politely takes her leave. She animorphs. And then Miss was like, uh and then it ends. <laughs> Probably this is the the ultimate showing that Monjomi is the ultimate dude, because he says, I fell in love with a tiger, and then Monjomi says, No, she was a good woman. <laughs> yeah, he's a bro. He's, he's a really bro. is a bro. He's a bro. Listen, man. Yeah, he's, you, he's on your side, man. He's on your side. Yes. <laughs> was technically that woman a tiger? Yes. <laughs> is there some other questions here that you probably have to start thinking about yourself? Yes. But for the time being, enjoyed her when she was a woman, not when she was a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and note that nobody else has uh, Misawa's back like that. It's only Manjome. <laughs> Only Monjome. He's just like, you know what, man? I was into some shit. I was like in Antarctica for a bit. I know what it's like to lose. <laughs> I was dying on a boat in the ocean for a while. I get it. Yes, I understand. Sometimes shit's just rough, and sometimes nothing's going your way. But I want you to know that, goddamn it, there was a buff woman inside of that tiger, <laughs> and that's who you fell in love with. Uh. Never forget that. So this episode. Like we said, this is the fall of Masawa. Not only is that that end, but Manjomi tries to save him, but there's no denying for the fact that he's 100% simping for a tiger. Yes, he, he sure is. He is 100%. And when this episode begins, after he's been basically dueled out of him, she basically <laughs> dueled the fuck out of him because she says, a husband like you could never satisfy me. And she kicks him out, which is the most the deep demasculating things that she could have said to him. Yes, because he uses every single one of the decks in his bomber jacket, and he loses every time. Yep. And Could she's not like, you're smart. pathetic. Absolutely. Get your prophetic deck away from me. I'm no longer interested in your <laughs> earth monsters or your water. Bo- Get your water dragon away from me. <laughs> Let me tell you right now, nothing's wet on this side with that oh water dragon. Oh my god. I apologize to everyone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> But I've been holding this in for two weeks. These jokes have to escape me at some point. Next, um, to show that he's in the dumps and just absolutely awful, he's drinking Tabasco sauce straight from the bottle. Yes, because that's the substitute for sake in GX's hot sauce. Re- no, actually, no. It's it's legitimate. It's just legitimate. Oh, is it Tabasco. real hot sauce? Yeah, he's just like chugging Tabasco sauce. <laughs> Which is fucking great, just to show you how how badly this man just wants to return to his Amazon wife. He just he has somehow at the age of sixteen has huge divorce energy going through him. Yes, he really does. He does. It's bad. And then when Judai basically, because he wants to stand up for his man. Not only does he need to get the key back, but also in general, he's like, you can't treat my homie like that. You can't ring him for all he's worth and then leave us in this uh, disgraceful manner, so I'm going to duel you. Uh, the duel itself I thought was very entertaining, mainly because uh, it returns the ultimate Judai move. Summon Avion. Pass. Yes. And of course he gets destroyed by Amazon Paladin, adding to another uh, t- another to the collection of times Elemental Hero Avion gets rocked. He gets destroyed by Amazon as Paladin. But the other good thing about this duel is that the Amazon is gladiatorial thing is basically like pay 100 life points, deal 100 life points. And when he does yeah. it, uh, Judai is basically like, I'm game and keeps paying 100 and then he gets a giant Stan version of himself. And then he duels it out with the woman, and through the stand, he basically fucking punches this Amazon it straight in the face. Yeah, it's just them beating the shit out of each other over and over again. Yes, and it's really nice. He might be the only uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! character who has ever thrown a punch. At least a main character. I don't know about Varane's. He might be the only one that... Actually, you know what? Uh, maybe in 5Ds. Maybe he throws a punch. You think? Who are the <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! characters most likely to get into a fight? Um... Yeah, main, I, could, main I could see uh, you say punching a woman if you needed to. <laughs> Not specifically, wait a minute, I'm just saying throwing punches in general, because Yugi never threw a punch. In either form of his. No That's punches true, Kaiba threw some punches, though. He definitely, Joey threw a punch, obviously. Like we're saying, Joey's whole role was to throw punches, that's all he I had. Think, yeah, that's all he had. He was a person who was best known for throwing punches. 
So very rarely do they show the main character throwing a punch with anyone, let alone it being a uh, woman. Even though she is a very strong and capable one, I should say. Oh, oh, you just mean physical violence in general? Yeah, you say uh, fuck some dudes up several times. Okay, all right. He does a lot of ass beating. He comes from the slums, so I would expect him to be able to throw down. Yeah, fight police. He fights the cops a lot. Yeah, no. Funny enough, you get even though everyone shit talks his dad, no one. He doesn't fight him. He doesn't fight anybody. He leaves all that to Gong Strong. And they also do the awesome anime, like, Rocky punch. There you go. Where, from the end of, um, I think Rocky 2. Yeah! Whoa! That's amazing! Yeah, yeah he's absolutely he's, moving ass. He's, whoa, we fucking hit him with the short... Okay, you know what? They should have just gotten Yusei for Shonen Jump fighting games. Yeah, it's great, because he hits the first guy with the Shoryuken, and then he lands with the Tatsumaki right yeah. after. His friend is like, what the fuck was that? As he's yeah. like the other guy doesn't even try to help. He's like, oh my god. Holy <laughs> shit, I'm going to have to include this gift for this part of the episode of this as <laughs> just some people it's know what we're one. talking It's really good. Can't wait to talk about that eventually. Um, but yeah, really good stuff. I enjoyed it. Uh, this 100% destroys Misawa, but it was still an extremely entertaining it episode. It does, but uh, my counterpoint to that is I don't care. Yeah. Fuck Misawa. At this point, yeah. He was really good in the beginning, but by this point, he's like like we see here at the end. Manjome is just that. He's just that guy. He's too good. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't get around Manjome. No. And unfortunately, you're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. He doesn't have that dog in him. The dog was removed from him. <laughs> he had it at the beginning, and now it's missing, unfortunately. It was taken out of him by this Amazon. This Amazonist took his dog and just completely stomped on it. Yeah, you're, you're not that guy, pal. It's just nothing Sorry. to be done. Yeah, stuff, nothing we can do here. But yeah, very good episode as we continue on the streak of good GX episodes. Let's go on to the next one. Episode 38. Get your game on, in English. And Underwater Duel, Legendary Capital Atlantis in the Japanese version. I gotta say... Very English, different titles. Yes, it is. <laughs> I very think, different titles. Yeah, funny enough, I think, isn't Legendary Ocean called Atlantis in the uh, Japanese version of the I game? I believe so, yes it is. Yeah, so, for some reason, they don't want to say Atlantis. I don't know if there's, like, some kind of fucking copyright on Atlantis, which would not make any sense to me, because Atlantis... It's me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird that they don't do that, but anyway. They, uh, episode 38, tell us about it, son. Uh, so there's like a submarine on Duel oh, Academy oh, oh. Island. Also, because I forgot to mention it, there was no real difference. Funny enough, there's not a lot of differences between the Japanese and English version of the One of the funniest episodes. differences in that, uh, in the previous ones, is that um, all of the card art is edited, including the Barrel Dragon. Because obviously, if you don't know this, the Japanese version of Barrel Dragon oh, has actual right. guns. Yes, um, he does. Yeah. The English version, they're like laser cannons. Uh, but Dion Keto the Cure Master is not censored. So just has your titties out. Really? That's yeah. crazy. That's insane. All right, we'll remember for that from here at this point on. It had been two weeks. I forgot that we did that. My bad for not asking. But anyway, episode 38, Zen. Continue on. Um, so <laughs> there's like a submarine on Duel Academy Island. And they're like, well, that's obviously got to be one of the seven stars. Um. And the guy's like, ah, oh, I got all these cards. I'm a card pirate, but I ain't got these sacred beast cards. And Judah's like, ah, oh, there it is. We got to fuck him up. We got to fuck him <laughs> up. Um, Sho and Judai are fighting for some reason. I don't remember why they're fighting, but they're angry at each other. He, he took the last um, of, like, the, I don't know, the fucking crumbs that exist in the... <laughs> oh, the minuscule amount of food that they are given to yeah, live. Yeah, he ate one of them. He ate, like, his shrimp mm. or something. Okay. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're fighting, and so they all go on the boat, um, it's Misawa, Majome, and, um, Asuka, and Sho does not go, because he's mad about the shrimp, um, the lights go out, and Judah's like, oh shit, it's a shadow game, and the guy's like, I don't know what that is, (laughs) I'm not doing that, um, you don't be knowing what the shadow game be, yeah. He said Barbosa from Pirates of the Caribbean the whole time. <laughs> um, You're in one. And they, they start their duel, and he plays um, the ocean field spell, and Judai's like, because he thinks he's going to die in the water. 
and they're all like, "This is not real. <laughs> this is a fake card game." <laughs> um, it's like I tell you, it's so realistic. And because of the effect of the field spell, he gets to play strong monsters without tributes. So he's like doing all this crazy stuff, and then he reveals that um, if he wins, he wants Judai to like stay on his ship. He wants to just like kidnap him, basically. <laughs> You remember the plot of Space Jam where the guy wanted to hold Michael Jordan <laughs> forever so people could dunk on him? It's kind of yes. what he wants for Judai, except for he just wants him to duel forever in his marine <laughs> paradise. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they... they. This is where I believe he uh, uses Neo Bubble Man, which is really funny. Oh, um, God. Though, <laughs> I'll have a specific breakdown of this fucking play, but oh, continue. Yeah, Neo Bubble Man upsets Wokey greatly. Um. <laughs> uh, so Judai wins but the guy tries to kidnap him anyway um, he does kidnap him well yeah well he does but Judai gets away in a boat um, and then he makes it back to Dual Academy Island three days later and then him and show make up and that's yeah. it that's the episode so Let's start with this. this oh, is okay, all... so this is interesting. Oh, yeah, the I, there, this please. page says what the argument was. Okay, sweet. Uh, in the Japanese version, it was, in fact, shrimp. Um, Menjome mm. gets mad on Sho's behalf, and then Judah says, well, then why don't you give him yours? And he's like, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's my shrimp. The English version, he trades the uh, Sho's bed away for a card. <laughs> It's a much more of a valid reason to be angry at something. Yes. And then he's like, well, I got you the card for your birthday, bro, because your birthday is next week. And then shows like, my birthday was last week. <laughs> so that's, that's an interesting uh, little fight there. That's completely different. I would be so angry if my fucking roommate sold my bed for a rare card. <laughs> Just like randomly wake up and like, where's my bed? Ah, oh, don't worry, bro. I traded it away for this uh, holographic pot of green. <laughs> Here you go. It's the first edition. It's really sweet. Oh, did I lose you, son? Hello? No, no, I'm here. Okay, okay. But yeah, that's a completely different. What is there any other differences? Uh, let's see. Uh, the 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 ship guy in in general. Uh, is a little bit different. Um, he wants the the Sacred Beast cards, or everyone assumes he's one of the seven stars just because he wants the cards. Um, in the English version, he doesn't do that. He just wants to duel uh, Judai, but everyone just assumes he's a bad guy because he's here and he wants to duel. Also, uh, they, they use real money in the Japanese version when he's like trying to bribe people. Mm -hmm. um, he, he uses yen. In the English version, he uses pirate doubloons. <laughs> That's crazy. It's funny because I actually hear here Judai's too stupid to sell a thousand life points for ten million dollars. Yes. That's a insane amount of money for just one thousand life points. I actually thought that was the funniest part of here was when he's like he's like, I have a grand strategy I got a grand strategy for you. Will you sell me a thousand of your life points for ten million dollars? He's like, no. And then everyone else is like, what? <laughs> You're yeah, stupid. everyone's like, why would, what? Do it. Are you stupid? He's like, whatever. What the, what the fuck do I need $10 million? I've got like the shitty shack that I live with my friend. <laughs> what more could I possibly need? So this episode, some specific things here to go again. I did like that reveal. It must have been very hard to do the reveal uh, in, in translation wise. Because, like, the specific... It's very obvious that, like, he's not here for anything. But I assume that's why they changed it in the English one. Because it would have been impossible to do the pun. To make it seem like he wanted something, but then didn't need it or something. Uh, there's a really good bit where they think it's a shadow duel because it's dark inside the um, the place that they're in. It was, like, filled with light, but then it turned dark. And Misawa points this out. And then one of the sailors walks in and says, We fixed the lights in the, in the dome. And they turn it on and everyone goes very angry. They do the angry Japanese, like, doing face. Yeah, the, the angry fall over a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
uh, when he talks about how he wants the Phantom Beast, I did some research. Do you want to know how much it costs currently to get English versions of the first editions of the Shadow Beasts? Not very much, I would assume. All right, let's 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 start with Uriah. He is the cheapest of them all. How much for original Shadow of Infinity, Uriah? Guess how much. <sighs> Hundred and fifty. Okay, you're close. His price is at two hundred and ninety nine dollars. Damn. Yeah, and he's the cheapest of them. So keep that in mind as we go to Haman. How much do you think it costs for Haman? Five hundred. Hmm. No, I'm gonna give you one other guess. It's it's higher. Uh eight hundred. You were close. <laughs> Currently, someone is selling Haman for $999. Damn. And finally, for the final of them, the big man himself, Raviel, the Lord of Phantasms. How much is he worth? Or how much is someone trying to sell? Uh, 2K. You're right. Someone is actually trying to sell for a near mint first edition. 2000 $2,000. Oh, I got and, one. Look at that. Yeah. And I think the reason is that these were short printed. And also, I think Raviel and Haman are playable. And Hama- and uh, Uriah is the worst of them. So that's why he's worth only 300 <laughs> Yeah, Uriah is worthless. Raviel is actually, like, usable. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's not so, good. But no. Usable. But now, now that they've released, like, new support that actually just summons them and stuff, and that they act as, like, skill drain on stuff and shit on the field. They are more usable, but they're obviously, like, rogue deck status. Like, they're not actually comparable to the big meta stuff. But either way, it has caused the prices of the cards to go up. I am always shocked about how much those cards are worth, because I could have sworn, when I was a kid, someone was trying to sell this shit for, like, 50 bucks. And I thought that was too much. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, apparently they're extremely rare. And they're the rarest thing to pull in the world, because they were short printed. So, there you go. And uh, this is another episode in which Avion gets rocked, episode 38, destroyed by a fish rocket as the whale looks on. Yeah, by uh, the Orca Mega Fortress. Yes, the ultimate meme card that can... We used him once, didn't we? In, um... We were using him yeah, in we Tag did. Force. Yeah, we were using in, him in uh, the... Yeah, one of the... Yeah, it was Tag Force. Yeah. yeah, it was in Tag Force. There we go. Uh, Manjomi has one of the greatest lines because um, at one point Masawa says, thinking about it logically, Judai has no way to win because he has no cards in hand and no cards in field and he's about to draw for his turn. And uh, Masawa says, there's no way for him to win. And Manjomi says, that's bullshit. I've dueled him. He has a chance to win. Yes. <laughs> show us your naturally born destiny draw and i think this is after they summon day dallas so he also has a huge big ass monster on the field so this neo bubble man play starts with the fact that judai has zero cards on field and in hand so he summons bubble man off the top of the deck <laughs> and then he special summons in and uses his effect to draw two more cards he draws Bubble Blaster and fucking Pot of Greed. Uh-huh. And with Pot of Greed, he's able to summon Metamorphosis and summon Neo Bubble Man. <laughs> and using Neo, uh, using Neo Bubble Man, which his effect is to get rid of uh, Bubble Man and uh, Metamorphosis, which again, Metamorphosis by itself is a better card than Neo Bubble Man could ever hope to be. It's on the ban list for a reason. And he's able to win using this combo, and I've always, always hated this episode for this play because it made me believe as a child that Neo Bubble Man was playable. Yeah, he's not. He's terrible. He's actually dog trash. He might actually go in the list of the worst elemental heroes. He's below the normal monsters with, like, 1,200 attack. And it's funny because um, Neo Spatians carry this trend where... uh... They get, like, quote-unquote powered-up forms that fucking suck and are not worth using. Because, yeah, if because Neo Bubble Man has the same effect as one of the Harpies, which is that he's always counted as his card. So because of Yu-Gi-Oh's dumb bro- the word salad bullshit, that means that you can only carry two Bubble Man and one Neo Bubble Man. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't have uh, multiples because it counts as it even inside the deck. Yes, which is also what the Neospatians do have to deal with as well. It's always been a dumb limitation that is due to the wording of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is... I don't know why th- this far into the era they fought like, yo, Neo Bubble Man might be a problem. We might have to <laughs> nerf him just a little bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, seeing him again refueled my anger, and I'm pretty sure he's going to get summoned again at some point. Even though the, I believe he does, yeah. Mm, the, <laughs> the way that summon- <laughs> It really does make me angry every time I see Neo Bubble Man. It's just so improbable. I'm over, as we've discussed in previous episodes, I'm a big... Um, proponent of not of combos that don't leave you super crazy minus and this is maybe the most minus play of them all <laughs> this is worse than the vwxyz play yeah and to, to even do it he had to draw like from no cards he had to draw like five yes and that, that's crazy it's too much um next and this is the final bit here when he's been kidnapped it's really funny because it's very clear that he's being kidnapped because he's like, oh yeah, let me just go on board with my friends. And he's like, your friends are already on the boat. And he's like, but I need to go on the boat. He's like, you're not going on the boat. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and then it goes to three days later. <laughs> and it goes to show at the lighthouse, the meeting place of his brother and Asuka <laughs> that they love so much. And he's waiting for him to come back. And the thing is that made me angry at show and also his friends then nobody gave enough shit about him to check on their mans. But they go like, he's like, I guess he really did stay for the money. And I'm like, no, you dumb fuck. Then no yeah, one. nobody like looked into it. No one. And then when Judai shows up, he's like ragged. He's very clearly broken out of this place. <laughs> he's escaped, basically. And he's like. Oh man, that old man did not want to see me go. And he shows up like so happy go lucky, like, whoa, everybody. <laughs> Guess who just came back from being kidnapped? It's your boy. And like, it made this episode this episode is bad, but not in a way that is actually like um it's almost like the monkey duel, where it's an enjoyable bad. Just gonna just kinda sit back and enjoy. <laughs> and dissect and do that kind of stuff but uh yeah it's been a while since i've seen old style of gx of badness but this is the goods type of bad to me where it's like so yeah this is like the endearing level of bad yes i'm this is i'm 100 down with this style of bad over the actual legitimate bad stuff that we got over uh, a couple episodes ago so i think it's bad but i think it's actually very enjoyable what about you zen yeah this is like one of those episodes that's just extremely stupid but like it's fine <laughs> you know you can't yeah. hate it but so much it's just like it yeah. is what it is yeah even as i'm talking shit about it i enjoyed every single bit that i just mentioned <laughs> it's stupid but you know what sometimes you just gotta like it just gotta go like oh yeah yeah sure yeah judai got kidnapped everyone was okay with it cool sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, nobody cared all right <laughs> no one cared Bet. no one no one took the time to stop, like... Like, imagine if the Shadow Riders come back and they're like, Alright, we need to find the final kid, Judai. Where is he? Oh, bro, he left. Yeah, sorry. What do you mean yeah, he he's left? Just gone. Yeah, he's gone. He's just gone. Yeah, he's, he's at the circus now, I think. The underwater circus. You can go check him out in that duel. <laughs> but, uh, he's gone. Yeah, we were real unfortunate on that one. Well, this sucks. <laughs> How are we supposed to fucking finish this, then? And they never do. Never? No. Never, never completed, never punished. And let's go on to the next episode, which is episode 39. Uh, The Great Detective Thunder versus the Dark Scorpion Burglars, or as it's known in English, the Dark Scorpions, which is not as good. No, it's not as good. No. Uh, Well, apparently even a further translation, Great Detective Thunder versus the Black Scorpion Grave Robber Squad. uh Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Instead of, I guess yeah. they use Dark Scorp. Oh, you know what? I bet the Dark Scorpions are called Grave Robber Squad. Probably. Like, yeah, they're probably the Grave Robbers. Mm, that would explain a whole lot about their idea. Actually, that makes so much sense. That's why fucking uh, Chick the Yellow was in Stumble. Oh, no, they're he's... just known as the Black Scorpions in Japan. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah. Okay, never mind then. I take it back. Go ahead, yeah. Zen. <laughs> Tell us about the Dark Scorpions. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... 
there is um, this meeting of like a shadowy group of individuals, um, eventually revealed to be the Dark Scorpions. Um, three of the keys have already been taken because our our heroes are dropping like flies. Um, they call the, what they believe to be the cops, but it's actually Don Zalug. Um, yeah, they call the inspector over who it turns out to be yeah. Don Zalug. Mm-hmm. And the the guy is like, ah, you should you should hide your keys not on you so that we can steal them. <laughs> um, there's a, a a strange new student who is actually Dark Scorpion Chick of the Yellow. Um, all of the keys are eventually stolen, uh, but they're not able to open the gates because they didn't win them in a duel, which you have to do. Um, Manjome takes over as the detective, trying to figure out what happened to the keys, uh, and eventually they reveal that it is in fact uh, Don Zalug because the Ojamas, I believe, saw them steal it. So and told him, yeah. So not only that, <laughs> this is actually a really f- this is I think a difference in the between the English and the Japanese side. But in the Japanese version, um, Manjome basically says like he does like a full on breakdown in the style of like Detective Conan. But then whenever they say like he brings up like a clue, he's like, I found a press on nail at Asuka's, and then they show like Mine the Foreign, and she's like looking at her her fingers that are missing like a nail, and he goes like. Uh, you should really clean your house. You should really clean your room, Oscar. I threw it away. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I saw footprints at the conference room, and then like, the, they look at his feet, and then he goes like, I cleaned that up. He basically took all the evidence and cleaned it. He's like, oh yeah, the hole in our room, and then he's like, yeah, your hole. I sealed that up, dude. Come on, there's a lease. Yeah, to this do place. better. Do better. Yeah, he basically goes do better. And then he reveals the reason he knows it's them is that he left a card because he can hear all the card spirit. He uses the the card spirit from the useless cards that he has, and he leaves them in every place. But you dies. He doesn't. He specifically doesn't leave one there because he doesn't give a fuck. And the reason that in his room the Ojamas were there, so they were able to tell him. So he basically says, "My card spirits tell me that you guys did it. They literally saw you do it." And the Ojamas accuse him, and then he's like, "Oh, I can't believe we got fucking caught by this." Can't believe we got caught by the fucking Ojamas. Yeah, out of all the things. <laughs> but yeah, that's how they get caught, basically. And then they uh, yeah, so they um they get caught by the Ojamas and they reveal themselves as the Dark Scorpion bandits, and then uh they duel against uh Manjome. We get a Manjome duel again finally. Yeah. Hell yeah. And Manjome wins. Yeah, he finally get a character who's not Judai that gets to win a duel. (laughs) Yep, and it ends with uh, him wearing earplugs as the dual spirits of the Dark Scorpions party with the other dual monsters. Yes, so they're all hanging out now. Yeah, it actually might be that he left the Ojamas with the others, and then his room is always filled with like bullshit, (laughs) so he didn't have to worry about that one. But uh, yeah, this episode was. uh, What are the specific differences between them, Zen? Uh, so in the English version, there is a scene that does not uh, make it in. There's, it's cut out. Um, and it's the one where they're like, oh, where do you keep your key, Asuka? Um, and she's like, oh, I have it hidden in my shirt. And uh, Manjome is like, dude, you can't ask chicks what they hide in their bras. <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah. So basically, what I yeah, because I actually take took note of this. They ask her where's her key. She goes to open up her collar and she says, "Mine is well." And then Manjome blushes and then he tells him, "He, you have no tact. Look yeah, away." You're a, yeah, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, but um, then she says it's actually around my neck, and I think. Th- and then I then we had a conversation because I said I kind of doubt that's where she keeps it. And then you said it. Both things are possible. I said, "Oh yeah, you're right. Technically, you yeah, are correct." Yeah, it could just be around her neck and also down in there. Yeah, um, it's a smart place to hide it, though. Real. Yeah, <laughs> no one's gonna go grab it. No, and anyone that would obviously is a horrible person. So yeah, well, they were bad guys, I guess, but still, 
Yeah, I mean, not all of them. The, the Amazonist wasn't bad. And she also had That's no true. interest. In, honestly, the Amazonist would never have been able to get the key from her because she would have been like, ew, boobs, get away from me. Yeah, <laughs> I she's don't like, want uh, to come uh, back here when you're rocking a certain other object and I will gladly <laughs> take your key from you. But otherwise, get away from me. Uh, um, other changes? So the the Japanese version uh, is a more direct reference to, directive, to Detective Conan. Uh, the English version, not so much. Uh, in the Japanese version, at, like you said, Manjome basically destroys all of the evidence himself. In the English <laughs> version, that's not what happens. Um, it's other characters that do it. So, like, in the English version, with the fake nail, Asuka's like, oh, yeah, that's probably mine. Um, the professor uh, from Slife Red is the one who cleans up the footprints. And Judai is the one who seals up the hole in the wall. Interesting. So what a way to uh-huh. make them look dumber... And, and, and him cats. look better, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. To make it seem like, oh, yeah, I'm we here with idiots as opposed to the other way, which is, oh, actually, I think you're idiots <laughs> and I cleaned up after you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very funny. Difference. Uh, and there's also a really good joke in the Japanese version where the Dark Scorpions pose like every time they their name dropped. Ever. <laughs> yes, um, they do do that. Yeah, and in the Jeff in the English version, they do not do that. This is what the Black Scorpions do, or something. Yes, and every single time they say it, they pose. <laughs> uh, and then at the end, it looks like they obviously hide away the beer bottles and Don's Luke's fucking revolvers, right? There's no way that they allowed his revolvers on. Because uh, the yeah, Engl- they do. They do hide them because they always edit that stuff out. Mm-hmm. Because in the English art for Don's Luke, he has double swords, which completely changes his character to me, I think. A character that yeah, because he... Yeah, in the, Jap- the Japanese version, he has guns, right? Yeah, he has double revolvers, which is the name of his main move. <laughs> Where he just shoots two revolvers at him at the same time. And of course, we have to talk about the most infamous thing here. Uh, Don's Luke is, of course, uh, sounds like Christopher Walken in the English version. Yes, so... Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Jax does this a lot. I don't know why. Um... Mm-hmm. Because later on, we'll also get the Crystal Beasts, who are also uh, actor parodies in the English version only. I don't know why. I don't know who had four kids. was like, this is fucking funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, that doesn't go away. Yeah, that's a, that's a good bit. I like the idea. Because you showed me this episode once off, um, I think, months ago. Where you're like, have you seen Don's Luke's Christopher Walken? And I'm like, no. And then he showed me, and I was like, God damn, that's fucking great. Because he's like, me, Don's Lou here, here to save and solve the mystery that you got here. Inspect the Zalou, ready to do it down. It's like one of the, not a terrible Christopher Walken impression, but it's not the greatest. It's better yeah, than Yeah, it's all. like just good enough to, like, that's obviously Christopher Walken, but it's also yeah. bad enough to be funny. Yeah, because there's no such thing as a good, authentic Christopher Walken unless you are Christopher Walken. Because everyone enunciates at the wrong time. And so I'm going to take them down a peg real quick right here, right now, and tell them that. I can tell when you're forcing the the, the Christopher Walken. You've uh, you've seen Crystal Beast Amber Mammoth, though, right? Oh, yeah. That's hard. Yeah. That's, that's Where Arnold. it's just Arnold? Yeah. Voiced by none other than Goku. Yes. Uh, a lot of characters are voiced by Goku in the four kids version. Uh, Crowler, obviously, is the big one. Um no who is Goku? Shit. Yeah, Crowler is Holy Goku in, in the English version. Mm-hmm. This is this is blowing more than my, my mind more than the fucking reveal that he's also Lucario. <laughs> yes, uh, but he also plays a character you haven't met yet, uh, named Edo Phoenix. Um, he's a very early season two character, and oh. his whole arc revolves around finding his uh, the murderer of his father. Um, and in the English version. Uh, Goku plays the father and oh. it's super jarring because he just does it in like his normal <laughs> Goku speaking voice. Hey Phoenix, it's me your father. Yeah, so he's literally just like, oh hey Aster it's me Goku <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god it's Goku. Oh that would only be as good if hidden for the Japanese version because we're going to miss this. It was voiced by Nozawa Oh god, that'd be so funny um, That'd be too good Yeah, that'd be too good Funny enough, I remember Edo Phoenix 
kind of has a Walken-esque voice as well, but not as like crazy as Christopher Walken. He talks very like this. I play my yeah, destiny he, he hero. He talks more like a like a dude bro kind of. A little bit, yes. He's he yeah, shows our like, destiny heroes. Yeah, he shows up in uh, Arc Arc V Arc Five. Uh, near the end, he's uh, the general of the fusion dimension with his destiny hero combos. Sounds right. Yep. Who who better if you're not gonna have? Um... Yeah, because they don't put any of the protagonists in that. Right? It's always like the background here. Like no. uh, Asuka's there, and like Asuka's Edo. There. Yeah, Edo's there, but no Judai, no uh, Yusei. No. Yeah, it's like Yusei's not there, but Jack and Crow, I think, are the ones that are there. Mm, they're there. I think. Yeah. It, Ah oh, man, this is, requires a different conversation. But I feel like obviously the reason they didn't do that is that Yuya would immediately be like overshadowed if they had put the main characters in there. But I think a much better because at, at near the end of Arc V, he turns into Zark, which is the ultimate dueling dragon who goes around shooting laser beams, going "Duel me!" <laughs> <laughs> hey you, duel me! I'm Zark. <laughs> That's Zark. And everyone basically is a ghost job out to him in a 10 person, one versus 10 match. But I think it would have been way better if it was literally like every other protagonist from every other series teaming up to fight Zark at once. I think that would probably have been a better ending uh, than having one out there. Because you, the, the other problem is that they can't do it because, you know, you can't have Yugi. Like, GX also has this problem. You can't actually have Yugi unless yeah, you, you do something. Yeah, you can't show Yugi. Yeah, yeah you you can have little Yugi, but you can't have the Yugi everyone wants. Yeah, nobody wants little Yugi. They all want little Yugi. Couldn't even be the hero in the movie where Atem is in heaven. Yes, not even there. <laughs> Very unfortunate. So he can in look. Bonds Beyond Time. They had to go back in time to a time period before Atem went to heaven. Yes, so, so that he could be the lead. Oh, man. That was the one thing that was missing. If they had figured out a way to put in the actual protagonist at some point, I think it would have actually made it the best series. But... I assume part of the reason why is because they didn't want... Because, like, they're, like, at war, like, killing each other, right? They probably didn't want yeah. the protagonists to be, like, mauling people. <laughs> Especially because that would mean Judah. Ah, oh, but then you could have um, evil Judai and be him be the main... Uh, actually, it probably would have been. I, it, it's too much of a headache. I also think the other reason is that you would easily overshadow your new protagonist if all the old protagonists come back and are just yeah, like... Yeah, because they're also all like better than Yuya, except for this Axel yeah. kid. Could you imagine like you hear any Yu-Gi-Oh series where they're like, a Tem is back, no one else would give a shit about any other thing that happened in that yeah. series, and they would immediately go to see where a Tem comes back and only see the specific duels with him, just because he's that much of a loved character. So I understand for that reason they can't include them, and that why it has to be like super crazy alternate dimensions, but I still think there's something missing by not having like someone like Judai there or any of the other ones there. Um, but we'll talk about that when we actually get to Arc 5. <laughs> But for now, I'll just go here. But yeah, there's not much to say about this Dark Scorpion episode other than I liked it because I liked the Dark Scorpions and I thought this was a great Manjome episode. Yes, uh, Manjome gets a lot of really great moments until... So every character in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX eventually gets like... They get backseated at some point, always. Mm -hmm. um, but Manjome doesn't get backseated for a while. And he has some really fucking good stuff between now and then. Yeah. Some of his stuff in season two or three are like, oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, I can't. I'm a big fan, a big opponent of it, especially after the the rebirth that he's had. It's old Manjome, big shit. The shit is Manjome Thunder. <laughs> big difference. But yeah, and a lot of characters do kind of get put aside. As we've seen here with Asuka, it took me a while. To, she, Asuka actually has more wins in Arc V than she does in this episode of... <laughs> In these 40-something episodes that we've watched of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. I don't recall Asuka ever winning a duel on screen when she wasn't partnered up with Judai. Um, so she, has, she hasn't won an episode yet. She's only lost one oh, episode. Oh, you know, she does win um, a couple um, that I'm thinking of. They're all kind of like jokey duels, though. Yeah, that's the thing, is that they only really use her when they're like... I don't know, this guy really has the hots for Asuka, and then she goes like, I guess this is where I duel now, because this is all Yeah, Asuka's kind of like one of my least favorite GX characters for that reason, not because she herself is a bad character, no, but I like, like her. her whole thing is like, um, 
I don't want you to view me as a girl. I want you to view me as a duelist. But then every time they use her, they're like, oh, <laughs> look at this pretty girl. You shouldn't have made her crazy, smacked, and beautiful. Yeah, it's just, you know. That's the her ultimate. character arc has not done too much service. No, unfortunate. The only person that doesn't seem to treat her that way is Kaiser, because he's too busy longing for the love of the lighthouse. <laughs> that he constantly goes back to me. <laughs> That's my head can as to why they always go back to the lighthouse. But anyway, yep, yeah, that's this episode. Monjomi is great. Good to see another episode with him. Now let's go on to the final episode to talk about. Episode 4E. A Lying Legend, or as it's known in Japanese, H-E-R-O Flash. A Lying Legend is actually a very good, accurate title for it is a good title, <laughs> this yeah. episode. Um, so there is a pharaoh that's brought back to life and he's like i'm the greatest duelist in history i've never ever lost um basically a god like, yeah and he was like wow judai of course wants to duel him because that's his whole fucking thing um he is one of the seven stars because he which is funny because like he was revived on screen in this episode which implies he wasn't there before Mm -hmm. Which means that the, the guys that were the seven stars were like, and we'll just get somebody. There's six of us, we'll get someone along the way, it's fine. I have a mummy <laughs> I'm looking to revive. <laughs> I'm looking into it. <laughs> I'm looking into it as they say, it's like, there's only six of us, I'm looking into it. And as I'm he looks working at it, on it. I'm working on it. You know, I'm we're going working. with seven. Uh, <laughs> I tried to find another pharaoh called Atem, but you know what? He's really hard to find. So I yeah, found it's really this hard to guy. track him down. So I had to go with this guy. Um, they they duel, and Judah's like, actually, you kind of suck. You're not actually that good. <laughs> and the guy's like, what the fuck? I don't understand. I always win. And Judah's like, I don't know how. You kind of suck. And then, and then the guy has the realization that because he was the pharaoh, no one was willing to beat him. They all threw their games. Yeah. Um, and then Judah was like, why don't you learn to duel for real, bro? And he's like, fine. And then like, he actually ends up doing okay a little bit. Um, but then Judah, of course, wins in the end. And he's like, all right, well, you, you, why don't you uh, practice dueling and we'll duel again someday. And he's like, hey, why don't you come to the fucking afterlife with me? And Judah's <laughs> like, I'm good. I think he we says, can do can, that again later. I think he's like, can you wait for me? Which this this by the way this back and forth he does not say specifically duel he very specifically will you come with me he doesn't say for what reason he just says why not come with me oh um, really okay in the English version he specifies um for the purposes of helping him become a better duelist yeah he kind of says like the reason is that he has a lot of fun but the way that it's kind of framed it's kind of at least to me it felt a little bit more like he had actually kind of grown to look okay let me tell you let me show you this scene and you tell me if there's anything between these two characters or maybe i'm just reading into it let me tell you look into that you tell me there's not something here the way he's looking at judah okay yeah it's a little bit a little, a little bit. bit. A little bit. I'm not saying that it's like, you know, full, but I, I that he might be coming off as like just like he is Egyptian. It's a different time period <laughs> from back then. <laughs> but then obviously Sho is like, bro, no, you can't go. And then Manjome, super supportive, all for gay rights, says yes, take him, take him. <laughs> he has no other alternative motive as opposed to just getting rid of him. Um but yeah, couldn't you wait a couple hundred years for me or so? And then he says to him, super romantically, well, compared to the thousands, they would pass by in a blink of an eye. You don't say that to a man that <laughs> you're, you're That's looking to. That's true. That's true. You know, just saying. I'm all here for it. Tell me what you think, fellow shippers of Judai and this pharaoh guy. <laughs> Abydos the third. Uh, any specific difference between the two, then? Uh, nothing super different. Uh, there is an interesting little screw up where, and the dub only, because again, the dubs change the format of the cards, because in the Japanese series, the cards just look like the Yu Gi Oh cards you can buy in the store. Um, in the dub, they don't, and I don't know why, but uh, everyone knows what dub Yu Gi Oh cards look like. And in the process of changing them, uh, they made Elemental Hero Clayman have the 
uh, appearance of an effect monster, which he obviously is not. Mm. No, no, he does. He's not at all. All right. Uh, some specific thoughts for me in this duel. Um, I really liked how Judai starts talking shit on the Pharaoh and his strategy, <laughs> which is summoning the spirit of the Pharaoh, which I'll give them this. The people who wrote this episode were very smart because they picked the one archetype gimmick that's worse than elemental heroes <laughs> this fucking guy the spirit of the pharaoh only summons level two zombie monsters that's all normal monsters not effects if it was level two zombies maybe it'd be good but then there's the fact that you can only summon him through the use of a trap card which judai correctly realizes if i just destroy it then your entire strategy is done and he tries to our righteous justice it uh, but then he gets met by, like, a trap card that stops it. Which I thought, like, oh, damn. Yeah, our righteous justice would completely destroy this man's strategy. <laughs> he would have uh, had to have scooped because I don't think he would have been able to summon the, the pharaoh in time for him to win. Um, but at one point he says, after he summons the spirit of the pharaoh, that's pretty mediocre given the time it took to summon. When the guy who's playing Elements of Heroes tell you that your strategy is mediocre, I think you need to pack it up. <laughs> I think you're done. <laughs> Um, yeah it's not great no uh but i ended up being pretty fun because it actually looks it kind of showcases the fun of fighting a deck that is like weirdly built like specifically this one because um i don't know there's something just interesting about someone using a strategy and obviously because it's an anime you can write it so that their dumb strategy actually pays off but i don't know i thought it was really fun seeing them kind of go back and forth uh at one point this is another episode where Avion gets rocked. He gets killed by a mummy due to the effects of Tribute to the Doomed, which I thought was really funny. <laughs> and then he also is able to use Hero Flash. And I made a note of this. I think Hero Flash is worse than every single piece of Hero. There's, like, no denying. Um, because well, I mean, it's worse in a sense that you have to fucking use the actual card to get it. So, I'll say this at least... Um, the one good thing about Hero Flash is that, in terms of its effect, all your elemental hero normal monsters, I think, can attack directly. Um, it can summon Neos from the deck. From at this, at this point, it doesn't exist. So, <laughs> not very good, but still. Uh, the reason I would consider each part better is that at this time, and specifically a format with 4,000 HP, H Heated Heart gives 500 attack and gives piercing, which is pretty good. It makes at least Sparkman viable for a 2100 beat stick for one turn, sure. E-Emergency Call is still used today, isn't it, in Hero decks? Uh, yeah, because it, it's a it's a free search yeah, card for it, heroes. It's a, it's a rota for just elemental heroes. There's no way yeah. to make that bad. Our Righteous I mean, Justice... Only, if it was all heroes, it'd be better, but it's yeah, still decent. Level 1 through 4, right? Or is uh, it just yeah, level but I mean, it's... It, you use it to search Stratus. Like, that's what it's for. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. your Stratus searching card. Mm -hmm. Our Righteous Justice, which at this time is un... It's maybe the most strongest form of back row removal because it's untargetable. It doesn't target. So if you use Our Righteous Justice, it's similar to Stratos in which your opponent has to choose to activate their cards now or they can't use them at all. Um, and then Oh Over Soul just is a monster reborn for normal monsters, which can bring back Neos, <laughs> which is nice. Yep. So for that reason alone, I think all pieces of the hero are better than the effect of being able to summon from the deck. Because it also says very specifically, you have to summon from the deck. If there's no normal monster elements of hero in your deck, you cannot <laughs> activate the card. It doesn't work. So that's my diatribe on Hero Flash. There's also a really cool uh, shot here of all four of the elements of hero normal monsters getting ready to attack directly, which I thought was cool. I don't know. Somehow, even though all they do is lose and get fusioned into something else, I like these four dudes. I like Sparkman. I like... Yeah, I like it's Crusader hard to Tricks. hate the, the elemental heroes. Yeah. Clayman with his big ol' rock head <laughs> compared to everyone else in his armor. I think they're cool. So, yeah. This episode ended up being perfectly enjoyable. I thought it was funny, the idea of, like, spending a Shadow Rider. How much of them... It really turned out to be that Carmilla was the best one out of the ones we've seen so far. I think there's still one more that they need to fight. Um, but they're basically done. They beat the other ones, right? They beat um, the Amazonist. Uh, yeah, they beat this the guy. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're basically done. And then there's one other dude, and then they're done for the fifth. Yeah, this guy was the fifth Shadow Rider, so there's only two more Shadow Riders left. Two left, yep. So we'll see what those are, but... Yeah, any specifics about this episode, Zen? No, it was a good episode. I, I just like the fact that, you know, this guy was already counted as, like, one of the Shadow Riders, but, like, before he was... <laughs> Even, Even though in. revived, yeah, that's pretty funny. It's pretty good. I didn't even realize really thought about that till you brought it up. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. Um, other than that, it's just a pretty generic GX episode. We get yeah. to the real good stuff at the end of uh, the end of season one here in a minute. Mm-hmm. So next week we should be talking about episode. 41, 42, 43, 44, and then 45 and 46. And then we have to stop. And then the next episodes are 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. And 52, and that is the end of season one of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. So in two more uh, episodes, we will be done with season one of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And we will obviously continue into two and three as well. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. Crazy that we've made it this far, Zen. It is a little crazy. It is a little crazy. Given our track record sometimes, (laughs) I never thought... I was also surprised when we hit 50 episodes in Gintamba. So I'm surprised that we've made it to at least 40 episodes so far of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and I will gladly continue going forward as long as we can. And as long as we are able. Lest the heat death of the universe uh, mm-hmm. occur. Yes, and the sniper waiting outside Zendor as we talk right mm-hmm. now. <laughs> the My Hero Sniper. Yes, ready for a bullet to the heart saying, let's see him repair this one. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it for Shonen Archive, everyone. We thank you very much for watching. If you ended up liking it, you can always leave a like. Comment down below if you feel so inclined. We end up not getting that many people talk about GX, except for people saying, like, occasionally, Yo! GX is awesome! <laughs> but we appreciate you guys very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. Uh, if you want to see more Zen, you can head over to Zen's channel, where he does Shonen and Chill with the Ocean Man, where he talks about various Shonen Jump weekly ones. I think you almost talk about all of them, right? At least the ones that you're interested in. The yeah. ones that we read, which is most yes. of them. So you don't, like, talk about Black Clover, for example, right? Uh, no, we don't talk about Black Clover, we don't talk about One Piece. Those are the big ones that everyone's like, why don't you talk about these? And it's like, because I don't want to read it, man. Sorry, I don't want to. <laughs> um, that, it is actually very funny, the idea of like starting one like dedicated to Weekly Show to Jump and then not doing One Piece. Yep, we don't. We do talk about like if One Piece has big news moments. Like We, we praised it for getting its uh, thousandth chapter and all that stuff. That's fair. Um, but we, don't, we do not talk about it weekly. Oh. We talk about like uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, My Hero Academia... Uh, blue box, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you're gonna have to wait for the One Piece stuff when we start going through all the thousand uh, episodes of One Piece God. in like three years from now, because even <laughs> I'm not prepared to go back to old One Piece episodes. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be something fucking else. Yeah, if you want to talk, if we want to talk about how jarring it is to go from Gintama to modern day, just wait till we get through One Piece, where it's like. You're very of an age here at the beginning, and also there's so much crazy film. We also have to still have that conversation about whether or not we're watching filler, because we also have to talk about that for Bleach and Naruto as well. But that's another mm-hmm. deeper conversation that we have to have. But yeah, you can check out Zan and his channel. You can check out me and my channel where I do various stuff. And you can join us next week for some more Shonen Archive. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Till next time, we will see you guys in the next video. Say goodbye. Zan. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out! Bye bye!